Thank you. Thank you. This was a very uh, provoking talk for all of us, and it shows uh, uh, how uh, uh, how this field has grown, the field of computing and AI has grown uh, in the recent years, and many of the challenges that it presents to us. Um, we, will, uh, and, um, we will not take questions right now, but a little bit later for Dr. Sifakis, and we'll move on with the panel where we will try to bring this huge field closer to the Greek reality and to what uh, HIAS can achieve with its efforts. So I will take a, a little bit of time to introduce our panelists. I will say a few uh, things about each of the panelists because I feel it will inform our discussion. And I will start with Dr. Timo Selis, who is uh, sitting next to Dr. Sifakis. He is the director of the Archimedes Research Unit of the Athena Research Center. Uh, during the last two years, he was a Facebook researcher, and before that, he was professor and director of the Data Science Institute at the Swinburne University of Technology in Australia. In his rich academic career, Dr. Selis was a faculty member at the University of Maryland, at the National Technical University of Athens, and then at Air. Air RMIT University in Australia. He has served as president of the National Council for Research and Technology of Greece from 2001 to 2003, and as a director of Information Systems um, uh, Institute of the Athena Research Center, uh, 2017 to 2013. His res research interests include data management, streaming data, graph data management, and spatiotemporal database systems. Our next panelist is Dr. Petros Maragos, um, he's a professor at the School of Engineering and Computer, uh, Electrical and Computer Engineering of the National Technical University of Athens, and uh, uh, he is currently the director of the Intelligent Robotics and Automation Lab there. He is also the coordinator of a robotics research unit at the Athena Research Center. Uh, before his position in, at the NTUA, he was uh, a professor at Harvard University at the Division of Applied Sciences and a professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Georgia Tech. He has served as a member, a member of the National Council of uh, Research and Technology of Greece. And uh, um, his research and teaching interests include computer vision and speech, signal processing, machine learning, and robotics. Our next panelist is uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kostandia Alexandru, and she is a professor at the Department of Physics at the University of Cyprus. She held uh, research positions in Switzerland and Germany before moving to the University of Cyprus. In 2010, she was appointed institute professor at the uh, Cyprus Institute, where she created and led the development of CASTOR-C, the computational-based science and technology research center. Professor Alexandru's interests are in theoretical and nuclear physics, computational physics, and high-performance computing. And uh, our last panelist, uh, uh, Professor uh, Christos Kozirakis, uh, he's a professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering and the Department of Computer Science at Stanford University. His uh, research focuses on computer architecture, operating systems, and cloud infrastructure. In addition to his academic role, he has uh, worked for Google as a principal engineer and has consulted for major companies like Intel, Microsoft, and Samsung, as well as several startups in the Silicon Valley. And uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Professor uh, Theodora Varvarigu uh, is uh, coordinating this panel uh, together with me. She's a professor at the uh, School of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the National Technical University of Athens. Previously, she worked at, as a researcher at AT&T Bell Labs uh, as, uh, and as a professor at the Technical University of Crete. Uh, she's currently also the chair of the board of directors of ADAP. As a, a distinguished researcher and teacher, um, Professor Vararibu has a research interest in cloud computing, multimedia content processing, semantic web, social networking technologies. And as for myself, you heard that I'm a professor of computer science at Rice University and the director of the Ken Kennedy Institute at Rice for AI, Data, and Computing. And my research interests are in robotics, AI, and their application in biomedicine. After this introduction, we are going to get started with the questions that we have, we are going to address to all our panelists. And I would like to start with uh, Dr. Timo Selis. Um, uh, dear Timos, you are heading an effort to further promote uh, research in AI and algorithms through the Archimedes Center. 
Um, how is Archimedes different from other institutes in uh, Greece? Um, would you like to discuss that? Thank you very much, Lydia. And um, uh, hello, and I'm very happy to be here. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, Hayas and Archimedes, I feel, have written two papers. You know, most of us are academics, and we know that sometimes we write papers and we say this was proven independently by another team. So at about the same time, we thought about the same problem. And the problem was, um, Everybody talks about brain gain, brain drain, the diaspora, and what we can do about it. So I think the paper we wrote is uh, you want to maximize brain gain, minimize brain drain, and include diaspora in the development of Greece. So uh, there is a next student of mine sitting in the back of the room, Kostis Daskalakis, uh, who is the enthusiast. Uh, I am, I would say, representing experience. And we have my own professor, Christos Papadimitriou, who is the wisdom. So we included, I'm sorry, we didn't use a machine learning system or an optimizer. We used our brains to come up with an idea. So Archimedes was uh, an idea that said, suppose we want to help to keep young people in Greece, uh, bring people back, and till we bring permanently people back, uh, increase the linkage with the diaspora in a pragmatic and realistic way. So I would say the only difference with Hayas is that we went to the implementation step. Uh, so the implementation is Archimedes. Now, why AI, data science, and algorithms? Uh, I think Professor uh, Sifakis made it clear, AI is uh, a hot area nowadays. Some people say the whole computer science is almost AI nowadays because it involves all disciplines. Um, and then we all know that parts of AI, I'm not saying all uh, AI, parts of AI doesn't work without data. And of course, to make this efficient, you need algorithms. So we came up with the idea, why don't we put as a theme AI, data science and algorithms and try to build uh, in a concrete way, something that will allow us, as I said, uh, to improve on all these parameters. So how is Archimedes different? Archimedes is, let's say, a research institute that, at least in the beginning, it will not have its own researchers. Instead, we invite researchers from all over the world, mostly Greeks, I would say, to collaborate with us. And in a week's time, uh, we have uh, the deadline of a call that we sent out um, to, you know, around the world for people to submit ideas to become research collaborators. So by becoming a research collaborator, you say, here is a theme that we should work on. And to work on this, we will involve students, PhD students, we will involve the researchers from Greece mostly, but also from abroad. And in these particular areas, because we believe are important areas, uh, we want to make a difference. So we want to make somehow Greece appear in not only as many publications as possible, but also in other kind of actions that may be relevant with respect to the society, with respect to education, etc., etc. So the difference between Archimedes and other research institutes is that um, we don't we don't say, uh, come up with our own people to do the work. Instead, we consolidate efforts from as many people as we can to do high level scientific work. Now, this sounds very, very idealistic for Greece and very nice. So I must confess, we were happy that we found funding to do that. So for the next five years, there is funding from the recovery uh, and uh, whatever, I don't remember the acronym, huh? resilience. resilience facility from Europe um, with the help of the Greek government, with the help of uh, uh, the uh, uh, Greece 2021 committee, uh, 
um, the latter basically said we support this action for the future of Greece. So we got, let's say, endorsement from, by some people. And finally, we got the funding. So the funding is for Greece. And this is how I like to present Archimedes. Uh, I would like to think of Archimedes as a national graduate school in AI, data science, and algorithms. Okay? It doesn't belong to any university. It doesn't belong to a single place. Yes, we're under the auspices of Athena, and Jan Semiris um, is here, the president of Athena Research Center. But our goal is to bring uh, all the good mindsets, all the great mindsets that we can find from abroad and from Greece to work in this very important area. So this is my few minutes introduction to the question how Archimedes is different. And of course, I can come back later as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for the time being, let me uh, move to um, Dr. Maragos, who is sitting next to you. Um, last year, uh, several of the members of HIAS, in collaboration with colleagues from Greece, uh, produced a report, uh, um, a white paper, that was called Robotics in the AI Era. And, uh, uh, and this uh, report aspired to prompt the creation of a roadmap for robotics in Greece. Now, HERON is a project that was initiated with this report, and uh, you are leading it. Uh, what are the lessons learned from this collaboration to be applied maybe in other projects? Thank you, Lydia, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to be here, uh, and thank you for the honor for participating in this forum. Um, inspired by this um, uh, report uh, from HIAS, which was uh, prepared last year, actually a year ago, um, and motivated by the fact that um, there is currently missing a robotics institute in Greece, uh, a team of uh, three faculty members from the National Technical University of Athens, specifically uh, my colleagues Vangelis Papadopoulos, uh, Kostas Kiriakopoulos, and myself. Um, we conceived the idea of uh, the goals, actually, structure, uh, the strategies for feasibility and sustainability of creating a robotics institute um, in Greece. Uh, named uh, Hellenic Robotics Institute, uh, in short, HERON. And uh, this would be hosted under the Athena Research Center. Um, then we proposed to, uh, uh, this idea um, to the National uh, Council for Research, uh, uh, Technology and Innovation. And uh, this proposal was unanimously approved. Uh, and afterwards, uh, it was also approved by the Ministry uh, of Development. Um, before submitting the proposal uh, to the National Research Council, um, the, it was this, the, pro the summary of the proposal was uh, discussed with uh, several members of HIAS, um, and uh, there were several advices um, on its course. Um, afterwards, uh, there were several steps uh, after the approval by the National Research Council. There were several steps. Um, and during these steps, um, uh, again, uh, the National Research Council for uh, Research and Technology uh, was very supportive. Um, uh, equally supportive were members of HIAS and also Athena Research Center, which would host uh, this um, um, robotics institute. Let me say a few words about the goals of this uh, Robotics Institute. Uh, it has two main goals. The primary goal, of course, is to advance uh, the science and technology of robotics in the artificial intelligence era uh, by covering a, a broad spectrum of uh, research and development activities uh, that uh, reflect current and emerging uh, challenges of national and European uh, importance. Uh, uh, it is. Um, it is based and designed uh, around three major research uh, directions. Uh, first, safety and security robotics. Second, field robotics, including uh, areas uh, in agriculture, maritime, transportation, logistics. Uh, and third, healthcare robotics, including surgical robotics, uh, as well as uh, robotic systems uh, that provide assistance, uh, mobility or cognitive assistance to uh, uh, people with uh, special needs. Uh, in addition, um, the uh, Heron uh, will also build a makerspace 
to support uh, validation, demonstration of research activities, um, education and training, essentially uh, help with uh, shifting the culture in our country from um, uh, having, let's say, students and young researchers who are very talented only uh, in theoretical areas to shift their interest uh, also in, in, in more practical um, areas to build things, uh, in other words, to diffuse uh, uh, a mentality of makers. Um, a secondary and important goal uh, of uh, HERON is to initiate and coordinate uh, actions for mobilizing and uh, collaborating with uh, the whole Greek robotics ecosystem um, among university teams, uh, teams in research centers and industry, uh, proposing essentially a broad strategic vision uh, and diffusing uh, robotics uh, uh, research and development uh, in Greece uh, in a variety of ways. Uh, currently, uh, there is an ongoing effort uh, for Hiron to, to be formally founded by the Greek government. Now, in terms of the lessons learned, um, I think this uh, very positive outcome, uh, which uh, we see this as a national effort, uh, I think it, it was the result of a multi-level uh, synergy, um, synergy, and, uh, synergy and trust. Uh, synergy and trust uh, among colleagues uh, who are in the broader area of robotics uh, in the AI era uh, with different expertise. Um, synergy and collaboration between um, the scientists in Greece and scientists from the Greek diaspora, uh, specifically from Hayas. Um, and then synergy between um, the scientific proposal uh, and vision uh, with the National Council for Research and Technology. And finally, synergy between uh, that and the Ministry of Development. Um, it required all these four levels of synergy and trust uh, for this very positive outcome, uh, which, we, which we hope that um, um, it will create essentially, um, as I said before, a broad strategic vision and diffusion of uh, robotic technologies in Greece and beyond. Um, so this, uh, these lessons then from this uh, multi-level synergy and trust, uh, I think could be equally applied uh, to, to other areas such as energy and or biomedicine, but uh, this would also um, require kind of a unified framework for research uh, so that these approaches become systematic. Uh, this is for now, and I'll be glad to come back with uh, uh, you know, more information on this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it's wonderful to see efforts such as Archimedes and, and Heron being initiated in Greece. Um, I would like to move now to uh, um, Professor Alexandru. Um, uh, you have been involved in the establishment of Castor C, the Computational Based Science and Technology Research Center at the Cyprus Institute, and you've been its director since 2012. Um, can you tell us uh, um, a little bit about the center focusing on what enabled Castor C to successfully build the scientific and industrial uh, user communities in Cyprus? First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. I'm really honored to take part in this initiative, which I think it's um, great, uh, and I think we all need it in this part of the world. So thank you very much. Um, first, I will start with the, my personal motivation uh, of starting the center in Cyprus, and then the setting uh, that we had at that time in Cyprus. Um, I am a computational scientist uh, needing big computers. And uh, when I took my job at the University of Cyprus, there was none. Um, and my personal motivation was, well, we need something here. The second motivation was broader. We created a university in Cyprus, the first one in the 90s. We educate the students, and there, there was nowhere to go after that. So we said we need uh, to create an ecosystem like the one, for example, in Germany with the Max Planck Institute and the Fraunhofer and the universities to have this research and education um, setting. 
Uh, so um, there was an, an effort to create the Cyprus Institute. And within the Cyprus Institute, uh, one of the priority areas, and I was very much involved in that, was to create the computation-based science and technology research center. And um, the setting, and we heard about it a lot here, uh, was to be interdisciplinary. So from the beginning, the structure uh, that uh, the centers uh, should have. And this is very important because we heard that there are grand challenges we want to attack um, uh, in this era. Uh, and for that, you need interdisciplinarity. So uh, the concept was to create uh, an interdisciplinary research center, um, gathering together leading experts in computational science, um, computer scientists, mathematicians, uh, that uh, can address um, global uh, problems of significance using computational methods and infrastructure. So this was the underlying glue of uh, keeping uh, all together the computational approaches and methods. So um, this is, some people call it one uh, stop shop, and this is important actually when you come to collaborate with industry, and maybe I will say a few words later on. Also, the timing was important. Uh, 2008, we had pan-European structures being formed for high-performance computing. Uh, the partnership of advanced computing in Europe were formed, where you know the concept was to create European infrastructure for computational science and engineering, and it was an opportunity to jump on this uh, train. And uh, I'm saying this because I think Greece has now this opportunity because Greece is now investing uh, in a petascale facility of 30 million. And I think this is an opportunity Greece has now to create uh, this computing environment. Um, we um, benefited from international collaboration this is also important in the context of HIAS. We partner with the National Center for Supercomputing Applications of the University of Illinois, uh, and also with the ULIC Supercomputing Center of Germany, the biggest in, in, in Europe. And this was very important for us to create the right environment and the right processes how to access machines, how to design machines, how to approach user communities. It was extremely important. Um, so uh, an element that we uh, put emphasis uh, on was state-of-the-art computational infrastructure, but also the knowledge environment around it. Um, together with the University of uh, Illinois, we designed actually, and I'm very proud of that, the biggest machine in the Eastern Mediterranean. It was the second in Europe hybrid machine of CPUs and GPUs, and I'm very proud to do that, second to EPFL. Um, and this gave us um, um, knowledge on the graphic cards uh, technology that was just starting at the at the time. So that was an advantage for us uh, to educate our scientists and researchers um, in these kind of technologies. Of course, we needed skilled technical personnel. Don't underestimate it. These machines need to be efficiently run, and we did not have personnel uh, to do that. So we had to import personnel. Actually, we imported somebody from the University of Adelaide in, in Australia to do that. So you need, you need the, uh, the, 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 the right skilled technical personnel, but also you have to retain talented researchers around the center for the knowledge environment to develop the codes and the algorithms. So you need the application scientists who have the vision, the, the grand challenge that it has to be solved, but you need an interdisciplinary group around them uh, to uh, develop the algorithms and, and the codes, and you need these interdisciplinary interactions and the people who can do these interdisciplinary interactions. So this is how we uh, started. Um, uh, we trained other researchers in, in, in Cyprus. This is important because 
you, you build your support around you, you build the scientists that are go then uh, are your ambassadors to the government. Um, you need an institutional leadership. You need, you need an institution that will go after and make the case for you uh, to get the funding and the, and the support, the government the support that you will need to build such a thing. Um, so building the user communities is very important because you can demonstrate that it's needed. Bringing competitive funding, and it was the right time for the developments in Europe, is extremely important because the politicians regard this as um, a success. So they are willing then to, um, you know, uh, acknowledge the work. Um, so I think I will stop here, and if there are further... Yes, this is fine. Thank you very much you. for sharing this experience. Uh, for Dr. Kozirakis, I mean, we, it was the point of, you know, needing infrastructure was just made. Um, the, you work in uh, computer arch architecture, you work in cloud infrastructure. What are the emerging trends in computing technology that the Greek uh, research and technology, uh, research and development community should track and potentially benefit from? Can you comment on this question? Sure. Uh, thank you, Lydia. And uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, it's, it's great to participate in this event. Uh, I will talk to you about what I see as an important uh, crisis and opportunity in computing technology. Um, we kind of experiencing a perfect storm right now in computing. On the one hand, the computing appetite of machine learning and other such applications is, is infinite, super exponential. Uh, we need faster and faster computers to train impressive models for all sorts of applications. On the other hand, if you look at the way that we build computers, uh, it's, it's coming to a halt. Uh, Moore's law is not dead, uh, it slowed down a lot. We simply cannot meet demand by going about it uh, business as usual. Uh, and that's creating a lot of fears. Uh, many people believe that uh, we're going to see a slowdown in all technical fields because we can no longer build the right computing for them. Uh, and it will impact everything from entertainment all the way to drug discovery and, and everything in between. Uh, others are worried about uh, creating inequality. Uh, Moore's law was a wonderful way to democratize technology. The computer that uh, only a big company could afford today uh, you will buy it in three years, right? And, and it was great. Everybody would catch up eventually. And if uh, Moslo has slowed down, then this may no longer be the case. A rich company or country may be able to accelerate the pace of innovation while everybody else will be left uh, behind. Uh, of course, there are also many concerns about the environment. We can talk about them some, some other time. So what does this mean? Um, we are changing the way we are designing computers. Uh, in the old world, we had these very big teams, hundreds or thousands of people, very experienced, uh, designing uh, computer architecture chips, systems, compilers, runtime systems. Uh, these are people who essentially took the dividends of Moore's law and turned them into some interesting design that could solve a number of problems. And now we're changing this to the following. What we're doing now is putting very small teams together people that can cast small design problems into optimization problems, into design exploration problems. And we use math or AI techniques or whatever you want to call this to basically explore big design spaces in a way that empirical design could just not do it. And we don't try to build general computers anymore. We try to focus on some specific tasks, some important tasks, and produce domain-specific or application-specific solutions, which are as fast as you need for this domain, even though they cannot solve all the problems in the world. Now, why am I telling you all this? Why does it make sense to discuss in, in, uh, in this forum? Uh, this kind of major shift in the way we build technology will, will lead to changes in industry. There will be many companies that we know that will demise, and many new companies will, will pop out of nowhere and will be huge. But it will also have the same effect on regions, and I think it's an opportunity for Greece that we can discuss. In the old world, it was very difficult for us to compete. Uh, we don't have the thousands and thousands of super experienced engineers. For better or worse, these big design centers that happen elsewhere, that happen in Silicon Valley, in China, in Israel, and so on, we just didn't have them. But in the new world, we don't need that big uh, uh, infrastructure anymore. What we need is a small number of people who are very capable in math, to formulate design as an optimization problem or a design space exploration problem. 
we've heard from previous panels that we have that, that the great education system, high school and university, produces talent which is exceptionally strong in math, and, and most of us realize at the moment that uh, we go to the US. And we have a limited, not huge, but enough expertise in designing systems, most of it abroad, uh, but there's still places in Greece which do great job designing systems, you know, uh, for example, my friends at the University of Crete. So we can exploit the small nucleus and try to take advantage of this and in the big shift of design, create something for Greece that uh, turns out to be beneficial not only for research output, to increase our research profile in the world, but also creates uh, a vibrant economy with both uh, big companies and uh, small companies. So now, how do we go about this? Uh, I hope that uh, our institute can uh, start a discussions that may lead to a significant effort in this space. Uh, it may be similar to Archimedes on here, what you heard. It may also be different. Uh, let me give you one example. Uh, for uh, Right now at Stanford, I'm leading uh, this lab called the Platform Lab. It's uh, 10 faculty, roughly, trying to figure out the right way to build future system. Um, we've always been funded by industry. I have not written a single NSF or DARPA proposal for eight years, and I really enjoy this. We can attract industry funding uh, to Greece. We can also hedge our bets and make sure that we attract funding from multiple sources to make sure we have a vibrant ecosystem. One issue at European Union funding, one wrong decision by the government does not lead to all these wonderful things dying. We have a portfolio uh, that we can use that. Uh, the second thing that I hope this institute can play a role with is that even if there is funding, it's difficult for a bunch of people to get together in one day to have a wonderful collaboration. It takes time to get to know each other. It takes time to develop a topic. So we should provide some mechanisms to do this. Some of us may have gone to places like uh, the Daxtool seminars. This is a conference center or whatever it's called. Uh, uh, a couple of hours uh, from uh, Frankfurt in the middle of a forest uh, that the German government basically locks up computer scientists uh, for a week at a time. Uh, you get to go very deep into a problem within that week. Uh, a lot of very meaningful ideas and collaborations have been generated in places like this. And we can do something like that. Take the best of the ideas or the best problems we've discussed and go deep. Um, we all know wonderful places that can be hosted, can host these kind of things. I know a bunch of them in Southern Crete uh, that I can suggest. And then finally, the one point that I want to make is that uh, this event, it's, it's, it's a great place for senior people to exchange ideas. If you look around, most of us you know, have been around the block a few times. We should also think about how do we help the new generation, the PhD students, the, even the graduate students, uh, the postdocs, the assistant professors in Greece uh, to benefit from this. Uh, there's a number of things that we can do. Um, one thing I'd like to suggest is that we start a mentorship program if we all were in one university, the students, postdocs in that university, assistant professors, they would have a blast, right? Like we have so many people to talk to. We can create the virtual equivalent of this thing. Each one of us signs up for virtual mentoring of two or three people, virtual coffee, one hour per month or something like that. And we give this opportunity to our young colleagues here. This will help these young people a lot. I think that we will observe the results in 10 years, 20 years, that they will be amazing. But it will also allow us to build relations with people here. So when it's time to do the collaboration in Archimedes and Heron, whatever comes next, we can immediately launch something very meaningful the moment the resources or the timing is there. Thank you. Thank you very much for this discussion. Um, I want to, uh, to give the opportunity to Dr. Sifakis to comment a little bit on what are the key elements of an ecosystem that will allow Greece to compete in the areas of computing and AI. You've thought about that, you've written about that. Can you discuss it a little bit? Yes, I've written about that, but I will say nothing specific about AI because these are general ideas. And here also I summarize my experience as uh, the president of uh, SET, uh, the National Council for Research and Technology. I think that uh, there is some confusion in Greece about what uh, it means to develop uh, an innovation-driven economy. And you see very often in the newspapers uh, articles saying that uh, this region will become the Silicon Valley. I don't know. I, re I read recently about uh, Ioannina, for instance, or whatever. I mean, this is a, an important trend, of course, if the number of, of startups increases. But we should understand that in order to have a, an innovation-driven economy, we should have something more stable and uh, more sustainable. 
And uh, I like this concept of innovation ecosystem that we had worked also as, as uh, in the council when I was the president of the council. So what is an innovation ecosystem? It's a system that where you uh, gather together three types of players, industry, uh, what we call centers of excellence, and startups. So industry, and these uh, three types of players have complementary roles, okay? Industry brings uh, problems to centers of excellence, brings also money to the centers of excellence, and the centers of excellence so do all the basic research, and, uh, and of course, uh, startups are uh, lightweight structures that uh, uh, can efficiently transfer uh, research results into products and services. So there is a nice complementarity and this is a, a stable structure. And I think the problem is how in Greece, and also this concept of, of uh, center of excellence is a kind of universal uh, concept. I mean, uh, you can, you go to Israel, you go to Singapore or to Germany, you will see this type of collaboration. And the question is how in Greece we can create uh, this type of structure. So, first of all, the universities, the research institutions should be able to play this role. And I think that uh, there are, I mean, still the uh, research landscape in Greece is too fragmented. You need for, research, for centers of excellence two things, at least. You need uh, uh, critical mass. And this is missing because of the fragmentation, as I said. And today, in order to do some research visibly internationally, you need critical mass. And you need, of course, excellence. You need to have the best people and to be able to keep them in the system. And I, I think that there is a problem because uh, there is an open market in uh, labor and, and the best people leave Greece. So I think that the decision makers should make an effort to pay be better salaries, to mo better motivate all, all the professors, the assistants, all the personnel, the researchers, and this is missing. So uh, this is what I wanted to explain, that we should try to build uh, innovation ecosystems. And I think that uh, Greece has all, I mean, all, we have the potential, the human potential, uh, we have uh, the geographic position, and of course, I will not compare us to countries like Israel, where these things happened very easily. But I know other cases. Uh, for instance, I know very well the case of Barcelona. Barcelona, they started from nothing. But the region, they decided to put some money to attract, to create, to, to create all their legal framework also to build such, such an ecosystem. <coughs> so I think that we could uh, do something similar in Greece. And uh, of course, here we will need the collaboration, of course. Uh, the government should uh, take some measures. Uh, the universities should be more open uh, to collaborate effectively with the real life economy, which is not the case. Uh, I mean, to the extent I, I, I know the situation mm -hmm. in Greece. And, and, uh, uh, and, and, uh, Okay, uh, I, I think that there, there are a lot of things to, to be done. Thank you. And mm -hmm. in particular, and to, today I had a question to the uh, Secretary General of the Ministry of Education. Unfortunately, I could not ask it, but I will put it on the table uh, now. Uh, when uh, I was the, 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 the president of the SET, uh, we had proposed that there is a specific framework for the collaboration between the Greek scientific diaspora and uh, the Greek uh, research institutions. And this is an obvious idea. I mean, this is an idea that has been implemented in Israel, in China, in many different countries that, in different manners. But this is an obvious idea. This is something obvious to do, okay? Uh, it's not about uh, uh, collaboration in general uh, with other institutions as, as we have today. It's something very specific. Can we uh, uh, transmit this message to the government? It's something obvious to do, okay? And uh, personally, I, 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 I am very much in favor of that. And I think that uh, mm -hmm. this can 
uh, trigger some very interesting process, for instance, to have joint projects, to have uh, uh, earmarked uh, visiting professor positions. Thank okay, you. we can yeah. have a list of things that we can propose. Yes. And this mm -hmm. does not cost so much money. And this, this will uh, create a huge synergy, okay, between the diaspora. And, yes. And, uh, yes, thank you for these okay, ideas. And it's, uh, it's wonderful both you and Professor Kozirakis offered ideas about uh, uh, what could be done and also how HIAS uh, could help. And uh, I just wanted very, very briefly to give the opportunity to the three other uh, panelists to insert ideas on this topic. But that I will give you about a minute each. So, Dr. Selis, how can Archimedes and HIAS, for example, and HIAS collaborate to have a larger impact on their goals? Well, in my opinion, um, since we share kind of uh, the philosophy and the goals, uh, I think we can join forces uh, in order to support, for example, mobility of students, mobility of researchers. Um, my understanding is that these are low-hanging fruits that we can always find ways to support. Okay, um, thank you. The, the second one, uh, in particular with HIAS, is that, um, uh, as I said earlier, I, I, have, I have the impression that Archimedes is going to be kind of an experiment uh, for a particular area. We can share our experience on how this experiment goes. And, and obviously, in computer science, we use agile methodologies. And um, I must confess that we are also using these methodologies. So I want to start with something fast. Then we'll observe how this goes and we'll tune it. So I think we, we, we should keep in touch and try to um, try, try to, to pass this information to you, you for future actions. Thank you. Can I ask the same question to Dr. Maragos regarding Heron? Yes. Um, well, one of the main goals of Heron is uh, to initiate and collaborate. Uh, uh, closer, okay. One of the main goals of Heron is to initiate and coordinate uh, collaborations among, no. <laughs> Tora, now? Now, okay. Well, one, one of the main goals of Huron is to initiate and coordinate collaborate, uh, collaborations uh, among the whole Greek robotics ecosystem, uh, both in Greece and with members of uh, uh, diaspora, like um, HIAS members. Uh, so um, uh, all members of, of HIAS uh, are welcome to, to collaborate with Huron uh, researchers in a variety of ways, including uh, joint research projects, uh, organization participation in short courses, uh, workshops, or preparation of uh, targeted, uh, let's say, studies uh, um, regarding some, some topics in robotics in the AI era. Um, in addition to that, um, uh, among the specific plans that Hiron has to uh, strengthen the ties with uh, uh, members of HIAS and uh, Greek diaspora in general is to, uh, to have available travel grants so that uh, um, members of HIAS, for example, uh, could visit uh, and spend time at the premises of, of Hiron and collaborate with uh, researchers from Hiron. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we plan to offer fellowships to accomplish researchers, both senior and, uh, and junior. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let me finish with Dr. Alexandru. Um, uh, can HIAS help um, uh, um, application scientists in Greece and Cyprus uh, remain uh, competitive? And how? Yeah, thank you very much. Well, um, I think uh, HIAS is already playing a very important role as a scoping uh, instrument. I think this, this for me, is very impressive that uh, you had to uh, identify a direction and uh, made the, the, the government funded. I think, I think this, this is fantastic. Uh, so scoping, um, promising directions, technological te direction for Greece, um, I mean, I come from a small country, we cannot do everything. So uh, we cannot copy the US, 
Uh, and we need mechanisms to identify um, promising directions uh, where we can excel, um, let's say first on the European level and then on the international level. And I think this is a very important mission that uh, HIAS has, um, has undertaken very successfully. And I think this, this can be continued. And, and, um, uh, and for me, the important thing is to uh, really identify the areas uh, and, and get the funding and the structures to create something locally. I think it's important to have something in Greece and then build a collaboration uh, with uh, uh, the rest of the world. I think this is really going to be fantastic. Okay. Uh, having common projects, um, common students. Um, uh, this okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are going to open the floor for questions right now and Dr. Varvari will be coordinating. Good afternoon from me. Um, uh, um, as uh, Lydia said, I'm going to coordinate the um, uh, questions and ideas uh, session. And in this task, um, I feel I'm totally replaceable by a machine. <laughs> so it's going to be easy for me to do that. So uh, I'll start by uh, stealing one of uh, the Professor Sifakis' um, uh, terminologies. So now he, he's gonna be, we're going to have the highest neural oracle uh, in what sense? In a sense that there, this is a gray model where there's some principles behind the network and there's some uh, reactive interaction. The principles is that we have excellence and we have philopatria and willingness to help the Greek community and those are basic principles. And of course, then there is the creativity, the interaction between this body of very, uh, 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 of excellent and very uh, willing to help people. So I'm going to invite you to ask uh, questions to the panelists, but also state your ideas, because uh, what we want to do here, we, we, end up, uh, we want to end up with an, um, an actionable set of ideas some things that we can do to go forward uh, in the area of AI and computing. Please. Okay, great. Uh, so there is a Greek diaspora program, which is, um, which I think that gets funded uh, from the International Education Institute and uh, Nyarkos Foundation. And this program has helped uh, a lot of Greek diaspora uh, um, scholars to spend time in Greece and teach, uh, jointly teach uh, courses and also mentor students and do research. And I think that at, at the University of Crete and at Forth, among other universities here in Greece, we have got a lot of support. So I, one action point uh, perhaps for the Hellenic Institute of Advanced Studies is to try to lobby to get some more money, not only from um, foundations, but also from the government to, to have follow up of these collaborations. Okay, so this is one. Number two, I think that it would be great if um, um, we had more, um, uh, like in the context um, of this institute, we could have more um, uh, funding for collaborations also in, um, in universities outside of Athens. Uh, there is a lot of demand uh, for universities in Ioannina, Patras, uh, Crete, etc. So I think that we should uh, take this into consideration. Um, so thank you very much. I'll have Dimitris. And then, uh, uh. we have a special section on AI. There's a reason for that. Um, AI is definitely promising and to some degree succeeding in revolutionizing uh, education as well as industry. Uh, I don't think we are there, but it's definitely promising. The question is, how, in your mind, Greek institutions, including universities, research labs, and so forth, will adapt? And what should they do? 
to adapt. This is a, and I would like to hear all panelists on that front. Okay. So shall we start on the left with uh, Christos? I'm not sure I can comment about uh, what specific uh, about Greek institutions needs to change uh, since uh, I don't spend enough time to have insider knowledge. But I can tell you about what happens uh, everywhere. First of all, you need to be much more open-minded about, open about boundaries of areas and, and, and everything else. Um, it's very easy for us academics to basically say I've been doing something the same way 20 years, teaching it, researching it, and so on. You know, why should I change? I think we need to have a very, you know, open mind uh, approaching this thing that uh, field boundaries will change, uh, disciplines will get merged, uh, they will overlap in all creative ways. We must be willing uh, to experiment. And that goes everywhere, in research, in teaching, in majors, in PhDs, in, in school organizations. This is a really good time for experimentation and being open-minded. I really like what uh, I think Timos was saying earlier about uh, viewing everything as an experiment. Uh, and, and keep in mind that um, you know, it's science, right? Most experiments fail. We learn more from our mistakes, and then we do it better the next time. Dina, what do you think? Well, I'm, uh, you know, AI is one booming area, right? But what I would like, I think, to focus more is grand challenges. I think uh, we should broaden it a bit. Uh, we are faced with grand challenges, and we need um, many uh, disciplines to come together. I think this is a change in uh, the, uh, the scientific approach. It's not just physics department and mathematics department and uh, philosophy department. I mean, we heard this morning. I think, I, I think if we focus in solving cross challenges and our education system um, teaches people to address current challenges, we need in this is interdisciplinary. And for me, the computational infrastructure and know-how is an en enabling technology uh, that can be used by many current challenge questions because data are growing, you need methods to analyze them, um, complexity is growing, so you need infrastructure and scientists to understand how to deal with it. So I, for me, I think the system should be, the, question, the, the key question should be um, cr uh, grand challenges and interdisciplinarity. I don't know if this answers. <laughs> Thank you, Dina. Petro? Uh, so far, uh, at Greek universities, um, uh, in many individual teams, uh, they have developed a strong experience uh, in these areas that you mentioned, AI and machine learning, uh, research experience, and uh, through courses that are applications, I would say, of AI and machine learning, both at universities and at research centers. Uh, so there is strong experience in that. Recently, uh, we are seeing now um, a growing trend uh, to a more foundational uh, training of students, like for example, uh, toward this goal, uh, there is um, an established, um, uh, I would say, um, an established uh, graduate experience at Greek universities of uh, organizing these interdisciplinary masters. So now, uh, at several Greek universities, um, uh, you can find uh, Master of Science, uh, especially in data science um, and machine learning. Uh, in addition to that, um, I would see, um, and also at several, at several departments, uh, like ours, for example, at NTUA, uh, there's now courses on the foundations of machine learning uh, starting. Uh, in addition to that, um, I would see young students and young researchers being inspired uh, by the applications of, of this area, uh, especially through collaborations uh, with uh, institutes uh, such as, for example, uh, the institutes um, uh, that are related around Greece uh, related to, to AI uh, applications and nowadays Archimedes or in the near future Heron. Uh, so I think uh, having the presence of such uh, research institutes um, uh, or research centers uh, dedicated to this, uh, to this uh, very broad field, 
I think will inspire um, many young students uh, in addition to, to this interdisciplinary uh, teaching uh, experience they have now. Thank you. Timo, any idea? Uh, to save time, uh, I think I, I, I don't have to add anything uh, in the detail, um, in the details, but I would say, Dimitri, that um, what I see necessary to adapt to changes is to get out of your comfort zone. Unfortunately, educators at most universities in Greece are pretty much kind of narrowed around their own areas, but they don't think uh, what we do as a, as a university or a department, etc. So I would like to see more people getting out of their comfort zone and start discussing together rather than um, kind of optimizing their own path. Well, yeah, it's your... Very, very shortly, course. I fully agree with what, what you said. Uh, and I will repeat what I said, uh, critical mass and excellence. Oh, yes. Critical mass and excellence. This is something very, very important, and we don't have this in Greece, and in particular for research in AI, because a specificity of research in AI is that uh, uh, the leading labs are corporate labs, are uh, industrial labs of big tech companies. Look at publications. Look at what are the leading figures today in AI. Okay, most of them have at least some tight collaboration if they don't work directly with uh, uh, industrial labs. Okay, and uh, you, you can imagine about what, what I'm, I'm speaking here, uh, all, all the GAFAM uh, club, okay? So one more reason to restructure research and create critical mass and excellence to be able to compete in AI. Yeah. Well, I, I get the feeling that uh, we all go for interdisciplinarity, but I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, getting to a point that I worry that we restate the problem. I think, Dimitris, we need even more disruptive solutions. The way, for example, Microphone. internet enabled uh, uh, the, the internet enabled education, disrupted technology, disrupted collaboration, and that was a, a disruptive change. Now, if we stay into collaboration of different disciplines and we don't come up with experimental news ways like you know Timo said you know the only thing that Timo said says be different try new things because I don't think we still have we yet have the right uh, answer to this question how to do collaborate we have to find new vehicles to do that but uh, uh, I, we have Petros uh, yeah, one question I wanted to ask, uh, actually inspired by what Professor Kozirakis was saying earlier about how things are changing, cloud computing, small teams and so on, and, and some of the other discussions about interdisciplinarity. I wonder, let's say, if we look far into the future, and yes, we have computing, yes, we have AI, um, what do you think is coming next? Uh, what, what would be the thing that we could focus and start preparing the teaching of the new generation? Should we go back and teach them how to do proofs and theorems, which is an art that seems to be lost slowly, or should we be teaching them something else, which I don't know what it is, but be interested to hear maybe from Christos and all of you, what do you think we should be? There are many ways to approach this question. One is what's next in technology, and I don't have a crystal ball, and whatever I guess will be as good as anybody else, I won't go there. But let me tell you one thing which, which I really believe in about teaching, uh, and I think it's a, a bigger pathology in Greece. Um, we've become very good about uh, teaching people math, uh, and people on their own become very good at virtual concepts and programming and, 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 because you have a computer to do. And then when it comes to doing things that require physical capabilities, modern students lack. So many of the applications that people do uh, um, using AI actually require physical artifacts. Uh, artifacts. Uh, and, and for some reason, you know, I guess you know, we, we're not that good about preparing them for the physical side of the world anymore. Uh, so having, uh, as somebody mentioned earlier, you know, classes or, or activities that uh, help people you know, enter the, the makers community 
build physical prototypes, understand how the laws of the physical world interact with the laws of, of, of the virtual world uh, can be impressive. And, and we see it in, in competitions time after time. Like when COVID started, there were all sorts of people trying to build uh, medical assisted devices. And just programming it would not help. Actually, somebody have to build a pump that is cheap and effective and can be close to a patient and, and, and so on. So I think that's something like, you know, the physical world is something to, uh, to focus on. I think we're doing a great job on, on the math, uh, theoretical physics, and, and so on, and we should continue. Uh, we should also make sure that people learn the principles of, of certain topics, the principles of, of AI, the principles of programming, not just how to use ResNet 50 or how to program in Python, right? Uh, but pay some attention in the physical world as well. We'll take a, um, a question from our rector here. Um, it is a uh, delicate issue, uh, an urgent need, and it will uh, bring us uh, maybe outside of our academic comfort zone, Timo, um, that we need to address, I think that of the uh, possibility to contribute to, uh, through science and synergies, of course, uh, to strengthen our uh, national uh, security and defense. Could this panel put this uh, issue in context with regard to the content of uh, this session? Okay. Petro? Well, so robotics is the closest, well, yeah, and also AI, closest, yeah. and how to, to do that in the yeah. context of, and also uh, Lydia. Yeah. Okay. okay, so. Well, the outside, well, robotics, as Dora mentioned, is the closest, uh, safety, security, robotics, sensors. The Turkeys are coming up with the drones, <laughs> what are we doing? Here? Yeah, that's. Uh, but uh, to exit out of the comfort zone, let's say the university, so that's what you mean, <laughs> then uh, I think the, you know, the, the university rules should allow also uh, projects that um, uh, encourage the collaboration between uh, university research labs and uh, industry, for once, to begin with, and second, uh, uh, also, you know, uh, why not um, something like the United States, uh, where um, uh, university research labs uh, are free to submit proposals, uh, for example, to ONR, um, provided that uh, it's publishable research. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this framework should be established first. Yeah. Um, to get our outside our comfort zone and, and uh, help our country toward the goal that you mentioned. At the same time, also train students both at the theoretical level and foundational level, as well as uh, giving them um, uh, an experience to build things. Yeah. Timos, do you feel comfortable answering this uh, question? I think I'm going to be quite general. I think the area you have chosen is an area that any country that respects itself should have a kind of a center on. Uh, this is typically, as far as I know, something that the country establishes. It's not, it's not the academia. Um, it, it involves industry, it involves academia, etc. And um, I, I would first like to see the country establishing a couple of, as, as uh, Professor Sifaki said, centers of excellence, uh, which are not necessarily in the narrow sense, academic, okay? So yes, we need to have a center of excellence on security and defense in the country. And, and that's a, an effort from industry, academia, everybody to, to do that. Um, we are open and we have always contributed in these kind of efforts. But unfortunately, I don't see the country designing um, centers of excellence like these that it should have over the years, and it's not something that we establish and we leave it to die on its own. Yeah. I promised Costas to, you, you're done? Okay, yeah. Uh, you asked for a question? Yes, uh, this is a question for uh, Professor Sifakis. Um, 
So one thing that uh, I was very impressed on uh, a while back is uh, using computational thinking to come up with designs that are completely non-conventional, you know, either for manufacturing parts and so forth. Do you think, so the idea would be that the human and the computer can do something together that either couldn't do on their own. Is this an area of opportunity that perhaps we can say we can try to promote and also teach the next generation of engineers to adopt? I mean, is this something that could be a real opportunity for HIAS and, and Greece? Yes, of course. Yes, okay. Yes, of course. We can do something in that direction. But can I, can I make a comment about defense, okay? Please, yes. I mean, having worked all my life with defense industry, uh, yes, I cannot resist making a comment. I'm really puzzled by the fact that Greek governments have never taken the initiative to do something serious on defense, okay? And this is something I've never understood. I will not say more about that. I know a lot of stories, but I'll, I, I'll stop here. But that's a scandal, okay? Because I, I, I remember when Turkey started the drones program, okay? I, I have participated to a NATO school in Antalya, okay, with some American and, and some uh, Israeli scientists, a NATO school in Antalya, and we were teaching uh, autonomous systems at that time, right? With Baraya and other people from Berkeley. Okay, so uh, it's clear that we could have done a lot on industry and for some reason, I cannot explain, or, uh, we, we did nothing. And I think that if a government defies priorities about how to innovate, certainly defense and other uh, areas and other sectors of economy should be a priority and we should invest on that. And of course, I mean, this is, this is the way to go. But I stop here. Can I add very quick things here? What do you think about uh, the ideas of uh, Russell, Stuart Russell of Stanford on AI and autonomous lethal weapons and all the activity in the US regarding this is a very worth uh, attending lectures. They are available on the web. Yeah. And okay. I was These amazed. These are ethical issues I, I, I don't want to discuss here. No, I it's not, it's not yeah, yeah. ethical okay. and technical. Thank but you. it's interesting watching Russell Stewart. Okay, I, I want to be very concrete and I want to give you all a challenge. Timo, see if you can come out of your boundaries. So I want to second what Sifi said about the fact that we need to move from model-based to model-based and data-based design. I don't know how many of you know it, but for years we have been designing aircraft from model-based system engineering. No screw gets constructed before, you know, the whole thing is done. The 777 was done like that, 787. We now try to do this with medical instruments. And as he correctly pointed out, we now face the need that uh, we are beyond what the models can uh, do and we need examples and so forth. So the challenge for Hayas and Archimedes and Heron, all of you, is can you get uh, together a group to work to develop a methodology and tool suite to design these systems, to take, for example, robotic arms or autonomous cars and so on and so forth, with combining this methodology and for, furthermore, teach it. Now, at Maryland, as you know, we created an institute in 85 to develop model-based system engineering. It took us 25 years to do. And now in the last five years, we're moving in this direction and we are moving via both a master's program and even pushing it to undergraduate. So it can be done. You have people here, you have people abroad that can help you. So take this as a question or a concrete suggestion, right? It, it is something that is needed. And most of the problems that we discussed today are systems programs. So this could be done, the new calculus, if you like, quote unquote, that you need to teach engineers, and then uh, what Kozirakis said about linking these two projects and design comes in naturally, okay? As, as the part that's gonna give you the examples or the prototypes or the data to correct your model-based methods and so on and so forth. Okay. So that's my... Thank you. Somebody wants to comment on that or wanna take that as a suggestion? Let, let's take that as a suggestion. Uh, we had a question over there. Yes, so I'd like to touch on another issue of uh, AI, something that Dr. Sufakis did not want to discuss. Um, it has to do with the ethical consequences of AI and the privacy um, that can violate on human rights. 
like we're moving closer to an era where AI with uh, brain imaging technology can learn the language of the brain and can think, tell what we are thinking of. And while there is this dual use of uh, uh, dual use technology characterization and regulations for other technologies, there is nothing for AI. So maybe it's time for somebody, and uh, maybe Greece should take the lead in this to come up with uh, some uh, uh, regulations that will protect human life. And maybe he has, uh, could also uh, help uh, along those lines. Uh, yeah, of course. That's the question to you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think there are European reg regulations or that are already uh, rather strict, okay, uh, about uh, privacy, confidentiality, and also now there are regulations about how to use AI. I mean, there is a there is a framework. Now this uh, debate is uh, is about ethical issues. Can be a long debate, so uh, I don't know whether uh, Greece should be a pioneer in that. Okay, I mean for me it, it, it's not the priority. Okay, no. I mean for the moment. Still Sorry to say this. Okay. Yeah. Sorry to say this. Tim. Yeah, I just wanted to um, to comment here that. Uh, Professor Yorzos gave a nice presentation earlier on engineering. I don't see any difference between trustworthiness in engineering and in AI. And as an example, uh, I'm very happy that I saw, for the first time in my life, uh, Maslow's pyramid on a slide. Uh, when I was invited to give a talk on data science for social data, which, is, which includes all that stuff, actually, I also used uh, Maslow's pyramid to say at every level how data science can help. If we manage to get people to appreciate that apart from technology there is something else which is called life and what we need to aspire to in the same time um, improving technology and engineering and science, but also remembering what our goal of uh, being in this planet is about, I think it will help a lot. Uh, finding the tools and the regulations and everything comes next. Uh, but I think the students need to be educated along with their technical education that there is something else, for example, trying to apply what they learn to obey, uh, say, the rules of society. If I may add one comment here, um, we can also produce very valuable tools as a research community. So, for example, we can debate where you draw the line for bias and AI, but at least we should develop tools that help us understand bias. Same thing for all sorts of other uh, applications of AI. Uh, AI explainability, it doesn't answer all the ethical questions, but it helps. And I think our research community has the obligation to produce these tools exactly the same way we did with other technologies in the past. Thank you very much. Uh, we have, we'll take these two last questions, please. Okay, a, a small, uh, a little bit uh, pragmatic, let's say, question. Uh, I understand that HIAS goes far beyond being uh, an advisory board. It wants to put things into work and uh, uh, establish the interaction and knowledge transfer between Greek acad academia and diaspora. And my question is, uh, is there, from the organizational, organizational point of view, is there a, a, a plan, a managing plan, a management structure that you, you have in mind? How will you do that? Do we have the means, the legal tools, or the funding tools to do that? This is my question. I think that we have, uh, the Petros is the, the right person to try to crack on your question. Okay, uh, well, as, as I was trying to explain this, uh, this morning, uh, what is the goal that we would like to have for HIAS is first of all to have the house of HIAS, which is a, a physical entity, uh, a place where people from all over the world could come and meet and discuss and, and uh, exchange. We could have different thematic areas, uh, we could have all sorts of things like that. So first of all, we have to find um, a house. <laughs> then we have to find 
um, someone who's keeping the house up and who's organizing things. So for all this, you need uh, money. And um, perhaps a thing that is about uh, HIAS is that um, we have made a concerted effort at some point to look for funding um, at least outside the government and outside all these different uh, vehicles. So we're hoping to contact rich people. I think perhaps if someone doesn't buy an expensive soccer player, they can buy all of us. So that could be <laughs> one way that uh, we can look for that. Um, but this is fundraising is something that is occupying our minds. And um, I believe that uh, many of us are uh, there's excellent people in HIAS that are very experienced in fundraising. And I have high hopes that uh, we will be able to do that. So I think that's the first step. And then um, engaging the community further, uh, getting the people to participate. I think um, I'm humbled by what I see today. It's, a, it's a honored and humbled and everything else that I can say. There is, every panel was fantastic. All of you are amazing. There's more people that are in highest that are not with us today. I see tremendous potential. So the board, uh, that's the board we have at the moment. Uh, it doesn't mean that we will always be there. Uh, I don't consider myself that I will always be the chair of HIAS. I think it would be nice to see people coming up and participating. Um, but I think we have a duty at this board at the moment to try to make these first steps and then eventually to, uh, to make it something that will be left and continue with a full diaspora. So if I, I talk too much, so the, the last thing is like, uh, in this board, we have at the moment an experiment also, which is to combine people of the diaspora who live abroad, uh, Greeks who live abroad, with Greeks who live in Greece. has been amazing. Um, I understand probably um, the colleagues uh, um, that were abroad and come here probably have similar experiences. I'll be very happy to <laughs> exchange experiences there. And it's been amazing. It's been very useful. A lot of positive surprises. And I think united we can do i don't see any obstacle for uh, greeks that are united so i'm optimistic okay and we had the last question from there hi janis and it is university of athens and athena research center uh, my question is related to ai and, and data science and computing in general possibly in connection with one of the other sessions on education. You talk about centers of excellence, multidisciplinarity, and, and all that. Uh, currently, AI and computing in, in the Greek tertiary education system is housed uh, in schools of uh, natural sciences or in, in schools of uh, engineering. Uh, but the Schwarzman College, uh, I mean, at MIT, and in other top universities, Wisconsin and others, are the trend is to take away and create individual colleges or schools uh, in, in the Greek terminology that are horizontal to everything else and all the other sciences and, and uh, humanities so that the central part that AI and computing plays can be better uh, served in education and then in research. Do you think that this model that we see in, in, in the US and certain other parts of Europe uh, can fit and how critical is it to do a move something like this or you think it's, it's okay to, to leave stuff within uh, uh, natural sciences or engineering the way it is now? I think that's a similar uh, point that uh, Dimitris uh, made earlier and there was some uh, uh, discussion early on on that, but do you, do you uh, feel you, you want to um, change the structure? Yes, please. Uh, I, I can uh, comment on a couple of things. I don't think there's a single model that will work for everybody and you know, everybody should follow it uh, to the details. I can tell you, for example, at, at, at Stanford, we've been uh, hesitant to launch uh, new colleges, maybe for a good reason, maybe for a bad reason. On the other hand, we have many instruments that provide flexibility. We can do joint appointments. Undergraduates can design their own majors, for crying out loud. So uh, there's a lot of other ways. We have you know, the Human Center AI Institute, which is across the whole university. Uh, so um, I agree with your point that uh, there should be mechanisms of flexibility across the board. Now, what exactly they are, I'm not sure. And they don't have to be exactly the same in every university. 
Yeah, maybe I should. Um, I would like to comment on that. Yes, I, I think this kind of uh, across the board would be useful. Um, I think there is no uh, un one w unique w uh, way to fit everybody, but I do feel that um, in places like ours where there is a lot of infle inflexibility, uh, maybe creating new structures that, like the Archimedes, uh, it's a useful concept to bring this all together. Um, I don't know how easy it is uh, to restructure uh, something in the university. Maybe it's possible um, yeah. to create something within the university research center or an excel uh, center of excellence where many departments contribute. This has been done in other universities. And I think that would be useful to have uh, joint appointments um, across uh, university departments. And th this would be an instrument that I think could be implemented. Uh, we have here the rector maybe hmm? could uh, be implemented, yes. And it would be useful, I think, interactions across, uh, across the uh, disciplines. Uh, Dimos uh, wants to comment on that as well. But before that, I want to uh, uh, comment on what uh, Christos said. Stanford, I think they're designing their departments around big goals now. The big department is the sustainability department at Stanford, right? It's a new school. In, a new school, a new school. So, I mean, I, this uh, maybe an idea would be to create schools or create uh, efforts, educational and research e efforts behind big goals, like the ones that Dimitris mentioned during the, the break, the UN goals. No poverty, zero poverty, and so on and so forth. But uh, I, I want to give to Timos, and then one last word to you, because we're 15 minutes late, and we're getting this uh, conversation between us and the uh, coffee. Yeah. I just want to say that uh, in response to Yanis's question, uh, this is a constant philosophy issue around education. And I think in Greece we have made the decision to teach principles in various fields and then people can form graduate schools or things like that in in consolidated areas um, and uh, I remember my experience with China for example and you and I know um, they they moved from schools of computer science to schools of big data then big data went away schools of data science I don't know probably now they're doing schools of AI but this change kind of indicates that all your education is kind of trying to follow the trends. And who sets the trends? So our experience with the Greek system, which, I th by the way, I'm, I'm fond of, uh, designing, um, teaching principles, um, I find it excellent. And then, yes, uh, it's getting outside of your comfort zone and designing, uh, for example, degrees across departments. That's a different story. Degrees across, across departments is very, very important. But departments or colleges, uh, this, is, this is kind of a difficult for Greece, I think, decision. Uh, yeah, I've spent a lot of time with the Stanford guys on the new school on environmental sustainability. It has taken them, um, you know, seven to ten years to really create the institutes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If it, if it was not for the $1 billion gift, they would not be able to pull it together. That's all. It's just all. True, but it is an idea to, to uh, uh, innovate and, uh, and organize solutions of problems and educational systems around problems, not around disciplines. But That's if, what if I, I may want one quick comment. There is already seems to be a lot of flexibility in getting people together at research institutes. I was at uh, Ford for a visiting committee last week, and in the Institute of Computer Science, I met everything, including biologists, psychologists, in the Institute of Computer Science. So you can already do a lot and then trickle down, right? Like, you know, whatever you learn, you can trickle down into master's programs and eventually reach down the undergrad. So go for it. Okay, let's continue that uh, during coffee. Thank you very much. Thank you.